Today's topic is polycythemia. In this video, part one, we discuss relative and primary polycythemia. Polycythemia is characterized by an abnormally high total red blood cell count relative to plasma, and hematocrit and hemoglobin levels are usually elevated. Hematocrit is the percentage of blood volume that is red cells, and its normal range for men is 45 to 52 percent, and 37 to 48 percent for women. There are two main types of polycythemia, including relative and absolute. Both are characterized by elevated hematocrit, but for different reasons. The elevated hematocrit with relative polycythemia is due to an isolated decrease in plasma volume. Essentially, the loss of water causes the red blood cells to be more concentrated, so hematocrit goes up. Absolute polycythemia shows an increase in red cell production due to a mutation in red cell progenitors or is due to elevated circulating factors that increase erythropoietin production. Let's first discuss relative polycythemia, which occurs from loss of plasma volume. This water loss concentrates the red cells and thus increases hematocrit, or the relative amount of red cells compared to plasma. Causes for water loss include dehydration, excessive use of diuretics, which increases urination, and gastrointestinal losses from vomiting and diarrhea. Treatment consists of increasing vascular fluid volume by oral hydration or in more serious situation, receiving intravenous fluids. Absolute polycythemia is a rise in hematocrit due to overproduction of red cells in the marrow. The three main classes of absolute polycythemia include primary, secondary, and altered oxygen sensing. The most common type of primary polycythemia is polycythemia vera, abbreviated PV which results from a mutation in the JAK-STAT signaling pathway that leads to overproduction of red cells, white, white blood cells, and platelets. Inside the red bone marrow are hematopoietic stem cells that differentiate into either myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells. Each of these stem cells then go on to divide into different types of blood cells. Myeloid stem cells are the precursor cells for erythrocytes, granulocytes, monocytes, and platelets. The lymphoid stem cell is the parent cell for B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and natural killer cells. Erythropoiesis, or the process of making red blood cells, begins with a hematopoietic stem cell that differentiates into a myeloid stem cell. The development of the erythroid lineage is dependent on the hormone erythropoietin, abbreviated EPO. EPO is an essential growth factor for development and survival of the erythroid lineage. Burst forming unit erythroid, or BFUE, is the first cell in the lineage to express erythropoietin receptors. EPO receptors are also expressed by colony forming unit erythroid, or CFUE, proerythroblasts, and basophilic erythroblasts. When the EPO binds to its receptor on these cells, EPO acts to increase the number of these cells and the rate at which these cells differentiate. Binding of EPO to the EPO receptor elicits the activation of the JAK-STAT signaling pathway. There are also EPO receptors on polychromatic erythroblasts and orthochromatic erythroblasts, but for these cells, EPO receptor activation is only necessary for cell survival. Let's take a closer look at a healthy or normal JAK-STAT signaling pathway inside one of the red progenitor cells. The process begins as EPO binds to the EPO receptor in the membrane of a red progenitor cell. This binding causes multimerization of the EPO receptor subunits 
and activation of a particular tyrosine kinase called JAK2. The activated JAK2 then phosphorylates tyrosine residues located on the EPO receptor and STAT proteins. This phosphorylation activates the STATs and causes them to dimerize and then enter the nucleus. In the nucleus, STAT proteins act as transcription factors to upregulate the genes that code for growth factors. These growth factors ultimately increase the production of red blood cells. In polycythemia vera, or PV, there is a mutation in the JAK2 gene, which causes the JAK2 tyrosine kinase to be active even without signaling from EPO. This causes the excessive production of growth factors for RBC production, and therefore increases the amounts of red blood cells. Different types of mutations in the JAK gene can lead to polycythemia vera. The most common is the JAK2V617F mutation and is found in 95% of patients with PV. The TET2 mutation is found in 16% of patients with PV. The JAK2 exon 12 mutation is rare and is found in only 3% of patients with PV. All of these mutations cause dysregulation of the JAK-STAT signaling pathway. A classic manifestation of polycythemia vera is pruritus, or itching skin, brought on by exposure to warm water. This is believed to be due to an increase in histamine, or prostaglandin release, that comes with the increased production of blood cells. The risk for ulcers also increases due to the added histamine, stimulating the parietal cells to make more acid. Due to overproduction of red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, the blood becomes more viscous. With increased blood cells, more cells also die, increasing the production of uric acid and the risk for gout. Also, platelets can be activated and stick to one another to cause tiny blood clots in the extremities and leads to a condition called erythromyalgia and gives the skin a reddish color. Patients are also prone to the development of thrombi because of the increased blood viscosity. Cerebral blood flow is also decreased due to the increased viscosity and leads to manifestations such as dizziness headache, fatigue, and hearing and vision difficulties. Splenomegaly is another manifestation due to the high levels of red cells being trapped in the spleen. Treatment for polycythemia vera includes periodic phlebotomy to reduce blood viscosity or a medication called hydroxyurea that helps reduce the elevated red cells. JAK inhibitors have been developed that reduce overactivity of JAK-STAT signaling pathways. Primary familial and congenital polycythemia, or PFCP, is another type of primary polycythemia. Instead of a mutation in the JAK signaling pathway, there is a mutation in the EPO receptor that leads to elevated RBCs and hemoglobin imparting a 50% increase in the blood's capacity to carry oxygen. The famous Finnish cross-country skier, Eero Mantiranta, was found to have this eporeceptor mutation that gave him a big advantage when competing in endurance sports. Thanks for watching. Please join us now for part two as we discuss the other forms of polycythemia.